Hey guys, we're in the kitchen today and I'm going to show you how I turn my oven into a pizza oven. So adding standard warning, I do not recommend you modify your oven in any way, shape or form. By modifying your oven, you are going to void your oven's warranty and you could potentially burn down your house. Now with that being said, in order to get your oven to like a, a wood fired type oven temperatures, you are going to have to modify it. So if you do modify it, I didn't show you how, I'm not going to show you how I modified mine, but I'm going to tell you how it works. So most ovens, especially like this one, uh, have what is called a self cleaning mode. Now the self-cleaning mode is basically the oven's way to burn off any of the residual anything in the oven and basically turn it to powder. And so how it does that is it uses a super high temperature. Now as part of the oven cleaning mode, the self-cleaning mode, the oven has a little hook and that hook locks the door. Now that door is locked at when that oven is at its highest temperatures, so no one can open it and, and have any issues. So if one were to figure out a way to bypass this hook, then one could theoretically get up to oven temps that are 900 to 1000 degrees. And much traditionally, we have a wood-fired uh, pizza oven that oven, the dome temp, is, is around that 900 to 1000 degrees and the, the baking floor, which is a pizza, you know, which is thick uh, stone, uh, pizza stone, uh, gets, you know, five, six, seven hundred degrees on the bottom and you can cook a pizza in 60 to 90 seconds. So, um, like I said, if, if one person was to figure out you know, to modify that, that door locking mechanism, which I'm not going to show you how I'm not, every oven's going to be different. And as I said, my warning before, I don't recommend anyone does it. But if one were to bypass that and turn the oven into self cleaning mode, then you could place a stone, you know, six to eight inches below the top burners on that stove and theoretically get the oven and that pizza stone nuclear hot. So I'm going to show you that my oven must have had some kind of faulty cleaning mechanism and uh, I was able to turn it to self cleaning mode and cook a pizza and here's how that goes. This is the modded oven. We have uh, the oven on self cleaning and the door says it's locked. My timer starts at four hours so it's been 20 minutes and if I scoot you down you can see that the elements in the oven are blazing. I have a stone right here, uh, very close to there. Uh, <clears throat> it's been, like I said, 20 minutes. Here is the stone. I don't have my main temperature gauge that I use for the wood fired oven, but the bottom of the stone, the complete underneath of the stone is at 425 degrees. The top, is above 700. So I'll just let that preheat for another 15 minutes or so probably to the bottom of the stone gets up 600 degrees or so and we will make the dough and go from there. All right for our first pie we're going to be making a barbecue chicken and uh, I'll show you how I do that. So I ferment my dough in these, these containers right here. There's a teeny little hole poked in the top so they can uh, vent excess pressure and they stack really well in the fridge. This is a 72 hour cold fermented uh, dough with Caputo double zero and made for wood fired oven temps. So we'll get into this. And how I get these out is I just kind of go like this and they'll fall out. This was taken out of the fridge about an hour ago. So 
So what I do is I put them in flour a little bit, put a little flour on the table, get my crown or my uh, crust, really doesn't take much for this cold fermented dough. It just kind of spreads beautifully. Do the same thing on the other side. And now I'm just gonna take and just kind of slowly stretch the dough. Trying not to um, do anything with the edges or the crust. I'll also kind of put my fingers up underneath the edge and just allow the dough to stretch itself. Just moving along the dough. All right, so that's about it for the stretching. Flour the peel. Load the dough on the peel, give it a little stretch out in a nice circle, like so. Make sure that that slides. Like I said, this is a barbecue chicken pizza, so we will put a little barbecue sauce on it. Grab a spoon. You want to work fast so this dough doesn't um, have any moisture and stick. You want to kind of avoid pushing pushing it down or you know pushing it into the, the peel because that will kind of make it stick as well. And avoid any barbecue sauce over the edge because that'll make it stick as well. I always check it here. We look good. We're gonna add some fresh cut red onions. Some pre-cooked chicken from last night. That looks good. I always keep my cheese in the freezer or in the fridge until the last moment. This is uh, shredded uh, whole milk mozzarella. All right. That looks pretty good. Don't need a whole lot. All right, before we're gonna launch this pizza in, you wanna make sure it's still moving. It is, that's great. It's been on for about 30 minutes and we're not gonna do anything different. We're gonna launch this sucker right on the stone in one nice easy motion. At this point, it's gonna go really fast. So I never, I, I'm not making another dough because I want to keep my eyes on this pizza because it goes from perfect to two done quite fast. You can see we're getting that spring. Things are sizzling, things are looking good. We're almost there. Really, really, really close. I'm gonna get ready with my peel to grab this thing. All right. Here is our fully cooked pie with some beautiful leopard spotting and the bottom uh, nearly perfect.
I put it on a cookie cooling rack because uh, we want to let our pizza rest and we want to uh, keep that crust nice and crispy like it should be. But other than that, if you can hear that crunch, that is exactly what you want. All right, so we're gonna knock out our second pie. Try and get everything uh, mixed in place. Or our sauce, I bulk make my sauce and I keep it in the fridge. So it's good to go whenever we wanna have pizza. Give it a little stir. That looks good. Grab my other dough. Like I said from before, we keep this in these containers in the fridge. This is 72 hour dough. And that dough is, is fermented that long. It's like butter. Give it a little push down, knock out some bubbles. This is a 70% hydration dough. Not a whole lot of flour, but uh, enough. Don't want to get any cheese in here. Here's where you can massage that back into a round shape. All right. So uh, first thing I do about two to three scoops of the sauce, depending on pizza size or dough ball size or dough size, I guess. You wanna try and get it out to the edge and get a nice coat, but not too much. You don't want too much sauce because that's gonna make the pizza wet in the center. And you wanna keep a nice even sauce. So that was about three, we'll add just a titch more. And as, as I said before, right now we wanna make sure that pizza is gonna launch off the peel. So we're good there. Get the cheese out of the fridge, even in between, even in between pizzas, I always keep the cheese in the fridge. The colder the cheese, uh, the less it's gonna start to ooze out on you as you're, as you're cooking. You want that cheese to be nice and cold. Again, you don't wanna push anything down, so you're just thinly spreading the cheese. Trying to get a nice even layer of cheese. If it looks like it's not quite enough, that's pretty much where you want to be. All right, so that looks really great. Again, I'm going to check it because I always check it after I do every step because the last thing you want is that to not launch when you get to the oven part. So some nice large dry cured salamis or uh, pepperonis, I'm sorry. So I'm going to put these on. Uh, so we can get a nice crispy pepperoni. All right, I'm gonna uh, check. Okay, we're still launchable in hand. We're gonna launch that pizza. All right, and you wanna get that, you wanna shake it to get it off the peel, but you don't wanna shake it back and forth as you're taking it off because that'll put some ripples in the bottom of the crust and it might be hard to scoop and you might break it. So now we wait. Um, it shouldn't be long and we should have our pizza. Getting a nice rise. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Pepperonis are starting to cup already. They look good. Like I 
said, you can't take your eye off the pie because it goes from perfectly cooked to burnt so fast. Oh my goodness, does that smell and look amazing. So we're really close to being done. So I have the peel in hand and I'm just, we're almost there. All right, I'm gonna call it. Just reach in slightly, grab the pie. Here's that pie. Oh, leopard spotting is beautiful. And there we have it. So they'll both sit on this cooling rack and rest. You can see they're, they're beautifully nice, nice round shape. They have some beautiful coloring. Uh, I'm gonna take you down and we can see if we can hear this beautiful crunch. Oh, that's so beautiful. So here with this hack, with the self-cleaning hack, you can now get a, a wood-fired oven type pizza in a short amount of time. All right, guys. So I hope this uh, video is informative and shows you how to make a wood fire type oven pizza in your home. These pizzas were cooked between probably 80 and 90 seconds, you know, before, you know, video, video editing and, and condensing it down. So you can cook just like in your wood fired oven, you can knock out a pizza in 60 to 90 seconds. And uh, they taste phenomenal. That slight char, that slight leopard spotting is a, is a, is a great way to cook. I still do cook with pizza steel in the oven 550 degrees um, but it does yield a different product when you are at those high temps and you do have that slight charring and that leopard spotting it yields a different pie and so hopefully this helps and uh, you can see it can be done in your home and it can be done in a short period of time it only took 30 minutes for that self-cleaning uh, cycle to run before I was up at those high temps whereas even with the pizza steel and that I let my oven uh, preheat for 60 to 90 minutes. So, good luck.